Fun Hackathon Weekend 2024. Here we go. Yeah, we have, this, is, this is my second year as the host. My name is Kevin, but you can call me Turbo. And we had an amazing turnout. We have some really amazing teams and lots of participants. Uh, so I'm really excited. I think the demos are going to be really cool. And I invited lots and lots of judges, uh, which will make it even more fun. Here's the logo that Tiana made for us, which was very nice of her. So here's how it's going to work. Each of the eight teams uh, that are going to demo are each going to get six minutes to demo. And during that time, they could show a presentation or they could show some website or some app or some AI technology. And uh, try, they're going to try to impress the judges. And then after each team, we'll give a short amount of time for the judges to ask questions. We won't give a long amount of time because otherwise it's going to take forever. Uh, here's a qu uh, quick reminder for the judges. Uh, half of this, or really for everybody, uh, half the points are for engineering and technology. Half the points are for business. And it's kind of purposely vague so that the judges can kind of decide what things they think are important for engineering and, and business. Maybe they think the, the presentation is really important for the business, or maybe they think the potential to make money is really important uh, and stuff like that. So it's very open-ended and intentionally so. Uh, the judges are going to be submitting a score for each of the teams. They're going to use devpost.com to submit a score. Uh, they're going to give, it's actually going to be almost like a score of 0 to 10. So they're going to give 0 to 5 stars for engineering and 0 to 5 stars for business. And then we will tally up all the scores and announce a, a first place winner. Uh, that team will get prizes. We'll also announce a second place and a third place, but they won't get prizes. Um, what else was I going to say? If there's a tie, then the judges uh, will deliberate amongst themselves for a little bit and maybe even flip a coin. Uh, but uh, let's see. So this event was kind of expensive because we bought a lot of food. Uh, so if you have any cash, you can donate money to our tip jar, which is over there in the, in the back near the food. Uh, we also have a Stripe URL that you can go to to donate uh, via credit card. And you can find that URL in the Discord or there's a QR code, code for it by the food. Or you can just Venmo me if you want. And I'll make sure it goes towards the event. Uh, but we bought a lot of food. We bought a lot of pizza uh, and fruit for breakfast. And then uh, last night we had a lot of meat. Uh, so this guy Chris was here and he was like grilling and we had two barbecue big two big barbecue grills going and we had a bunch of like salmon and shrimp and stuff so it was pretty cool. Uh, the Wi-Fi network is Hackathon. The password is Hacker Dojo 2024. That's a typo. Um, it, yeah, it's uh, 2024, all lowercase. We are supposedly streaming live. Yeah, I can see. We're live on Twitch TV slash Hacker Dojo TV. So hopefully anybody watching on the internet can hear me and get video. Is it also on YouTube slash? Uh, it's not live streaming to YouTube. However, we're recording it to this computer's hard drive and we're going to put it on YouTube afterwards. Could you please bring the Twitch TV link once again? The Twitch TV link is Hacker Dojo TV. Yeah, Twitch.tv. And uh, yeah, I asked. I, well, anyway. Um, yeah, so it should be good. Uh, before you leave, I want everybody to clean up five things. If everybody cleans up five things, then the place will be really clean, and I won't get in trouble for hosting this giant event here. Also, if you want to enter the raffle for a Red Bull hat, 
We have six Red Bull hats that we need to give away. Uh, we'll do that after demos. But the way you enter the raffle is by submitting a idea for a startup to Red Bull's website and then letting me know that you submitted an idea, just like ping me on Discord or whatever. And then I'll enter you into the raffle. So this cartoon is a funny joke. It, it's a guy saying, have you been helped, sir? And then the customer says, by so many people my entire life. So the reason I brought up this joke is because now I want to thank people for making this event possible. So for example, thank you to the Hacker Dojo staff and board, uh, in particular, Tiana, Eric, and Emily. Tiana's not here right now, but she's done a ton of work to uh, make this event go smoothly. And she's provided a ton of support and great ideas and stuff. Thank you to the volunteers and mentors, people like Ash, my co-host, uh, Chris, who was uh, grilling outside last night, Bo, who's helping with the streaming, Mimi, who's helped setting up, and Stephanie, who helped mentor people a little bit. Um, so thanks, volunteers and mentors. Uh, thank you to all the judges who are going to help make uh, the judging a success and determine our winner. Thank you to anybody who brought food, such as Liz, Chris, Eric, and probably and more. Give them a round of applause. Uh, thank you to the participants, because uh, the best thing about organizing a hackathon is having lots of people show up and participate. So let's give a round of applause for the participants. Thank you, Kindred Networks, uh, for helping to sponsor the event and paying for some of the food and also for their work uh, helping startups. So we're gonna have, so we'll give them a round of applause and then we'll have Kevin share a few words about Kindred Networks. <laughs> Kevin is uh, visiting from New York. He's, he's not here just to visit us, but he's kind of here just to visit us. I'm definitely here just to visit you guys. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna take up too much of everyone's time. Um, my name is Kevin, I'm a co-founder of Kindred Networks. Um, we are a system integration shop, and um, uh, uniquely, we actually help uh, startup SaaS companies to help implement uh, their software to enterprise clients so they can focus on their product and make, make them even better. Um, so for your next entrepreneurial endeavor, um, keep us in mind, and uh, really happy to be here, and uh, hope everyone had a lot of fun, and preemptively congratulate the winner, wherever you may be. And uh, thank you, Kevin, for hosting the microphone. It appears to be a great success. Awesome. All right. Which reminds me, hopefully somebody is taking photos of this event. I didn't like put one person in charge, but if one person wants to be in charge of taking photos, including of the judges and whatnot. Um, then next, thank you Red Bull for the hats and the Red Bull energy drinks. Thank you Costco, Cardenas, Amazon, and Grocery Outlet for selling food and supplies to me. Without you, I wouldn't be able to acquire food and supplies so easily. And finally, thank you to all the technology that I've been using this past weekend, like Meetup, Discord, DevPost, Twitch, and YouTube. I also want to give a shout out to the Silicon Valley Computer Programming Club, which uh, meets once a month here at the Hacker Dojo. It's a meetup that myself and my friends put on, and we just talk about programming and programming languages and APIs and what whatever tools we're using. So we are on the, you can find us on Hacker Dojo's meetup.com page. Uh, but it's the third Saturday of every month, and it's in the classroom. So definitely check it out. Um, next, we have the order of the demos. So this was randomly chosen, and it's been a secret until now. Uh, but we have iGen, Echo, Delphi, Byte Buddies, AI Drone Simulation, Why Not, Rec Rent, Buddy. Uh, I, think it, I think it's just called Buddy um, and Founder. 
So, um, note which order you're going into. Uh, and then when, you know, be ready because it's going to take a long time for us to get through every team. So you want to be, when it's your turn to go next, you want to be ready. So uh, with that, I don't have any further announcements. Should we get a round of applause for all the teams that are about to demo? It's fun to have them on your thing. 2024, ask this question. Yeah, so we have a camera over there, and that's the camera that's live streaming to Twitch and the world. So um, it's as long as you're standing here, you're definitely fine. Uh, you can go pretty far over here. It's got a surprisingly wide lens. So, Bo, am I still in the? Yeah, yeah. So you can still you can be all the way over here, and it's still fine. We're using the wide lens so we can capture most of the stage. Um, yeah, so hopefully everything goes smoothly. Hoping, hopefully the judging works. Work the judging website works well. Uh, and with that, let's bring up iGen. And I'm going to have like a six minute timer on my laptop so that you know how much time you have left. And if you, you, uh, you need it, uh, we can do HDMI. It's got an, you can just unplug the USB C part of it. And we have one microphone here. We might also have, well, this is like the perfect one. Okay, let's have, we need to, they can like use it and then pass it on. Yeah, if you want a second microphone, yeah, we can use the second wireless microphone. Hey guys, my name is Jay and uh, we are iGen and uh, we are trying to simplify image generation. So the problem, we have a lot of photos and videos in our album, but most of the time they're just sitting there taking up storage and not doing anything. So AI image generation, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's very popular nowadays and uh, we just want to do something fun and put your photos in use again. Uh, the solution is that we want to create an app that has a friendly user e user interface uh, with prompt suggestion and gamification. As you can see on the right, this is what we were able to generate over the weekend. It was me uh, suited up. That is the total um, AI uh, tooling market and the serve available market is $15 billion. This is uh, uh, tools that focus on image generation and the target mark market, which is the app that we are uh, targeting, uh, are the everyday user, non savvy users uh, that want to do something with AI image generation. And let's have a ref to talk a little bit more about target user. So uh, so our target user is we're targeting everyone. We want all genders to be on our app. Uh, everyone, it's all inclusive. Uh, the age group that we're targeting is from 13 to 40 years old. We believe that a younger to a mid mid age person would be able to use our app without any flaws. The location is we're global. We want to be everywhere, but we're going to focus on North America, any of the places which are uh, tech savvy. Okay, um, the areas that we're looking for are in photography and graphic design. Anywhere, uh, anyone that has interest in photography and graphic design will do well. And then the values that we look for are uh, creativity and efficiency. So the competition is, we have a couple of main competitions, Midjourney, Remini, and Art Reader. So the problem with Midjourney is that they, they require you to download Discord. And with Discord, you have to up upload a bot and you have to do set it up. And so it's a long process with Remini. They have a really expensive platform, which is really hard to like try it out. 
For Art Breeder, again, you have to install another bot and it's it takes time. And for someone who wants to just try the application, it's a long process for them. So the different uh, differentiation is that we want uh, intuitive user experience. We want everyone to have a chance at our, at our platform. We also have prompt generation. So if you're having trouble figuring out what you want to what you want to generate, there's prompts already given to you. We also decide to gamify our application, and the cost of use is very cheap compared to other pl platforms, which we'll show. So our business model is that we have a B two B where we plan to pl uh, where we plan to partner with other companies for for advertisements or themed themed promotions. And then we have a B2C, which option one, we allow free photos with watermarks. For example, we get one here. For option two, we have 99 cents per photo without a watermark. For option three, we have a, three, a 399 weekly subscription. And this will give you a chance to try our app without being stuck on a long plan. <laughs> Okay, uh, engineering size, like uh, we want to make uh, like uh, the user experience, we want to make the user experience really simple. So we just need to choose, upload your photo and uh, choose the style or like uh, some theme you want. And you don't need to worry about like which model is the best for your use case or which is the most cost effective. Uh, we can we can select like uh, Midjourney, uh, Stable Diffusion, DALI, or maybe some future. Uh, model for you and also like you don't have to because sometimes you uh, need to write very really complicated uh, prompt to make something work and even like uh, uh, some agent workflow so we will try to uh, like uh, basically just use select one something and we create that for you uh, let me just uh, switch to a demo so uh, apology first, like uh, we have uh, two feature branch, like we don't have time to merge. So I will do uh, basically two kind of demo. This is kind of like a main branch, basically. This is kind of like the- uh, Can you speak a little louder? So oh, okay. So uh, this one is like one feature branch. This is kind of like more uh, like a prompting to image. So we uh, we select, we kind of like pre-populate some uh, theme or style for you, so you just choose, and uh, basically you will see uh, the picture generated for you. And uh, I will do a demo, so I guess like I hope that like there's no issue or something. So I have to wait a little bit. So this is a forest night theme, and uh, you can like we generate for picture. You can choose one like maybe best is for you. And let's say Minecraft. The small, okay. Nice. Yeah, and uh, let's say maybe Star, Star Wars, right? So I guess that's uh, popular. Oh, okay, that's a, that's a surprise. Uh, let me switch to the next uh, uh, branch. Running out of time. Okay. So actually, this one has some cache. So I will first show some cached photo. So uh, basically, I select theme, and uh, this is previous generated. Like like I select like uh, some person. Let's say this is cached. So this is before after. So start with here. And uh, all right, that's all the time we have. Okay, just a, sorry. Uh, like, so uh, let's uh, stop there and give a round of applause. Okay. Uh, so my question is, what are you using to generate these images? Are you calling some API? Are you running some model somewhere? Uh, yes, so uh, my name is Everett, and the, uh, we're using Stable Diffusion for, for most of these uh, model, uh, or most of these images that are generated. But we actually have five different models. It's a multi-model system. 
that we can act, that we can uh, select or allow the user to select at some future uh, uh, point. Do the users select which model to use, or is there some sort of algorithm in the back end that automatically selects the most appropriate one? Right. So for right now, for the hackathon, we're just we have a, a fixed model that we're using. Um, but in the future, we could dynamically select it and also allow like our pro version uh, users to pick and choose what model they want to use. Hey David. So one of the challenges I saw like with your project was um, that the generated images can sometimes be inconsistent or uh, unexpected, as you mentioned. So I was curious on what can be done more on top of that, like you know, make it more consistent, so like you know, it is uh, more close to what the user expects. Yes. Uh, so we, we are working on some of those uh, some of those little uh, bugs that you can run into with this type of uh, emerging technology, and and we are yeah we, we we are we are making notes of them and we're and we're tracking them down. We're going to fix them now. Yes, I think one one uh, comment is like basically if we want to uh, like generally based on one image and the end result like this, so the original image may be distorted. I think we want to kind of like focus on that, try to add a style that uh, your face, uh, your original feature, we try to uh, preserve as much as possible. This is what we promise. And, and just uh, echo Delphi, you're on deck here. So just make sure that you're next. Let me get a couple more questions. So, uh, how do you? I was wondering what the backend infra in terms of hardware is, and why is it that, like, how do you think it can be made? This this product can be made scalable, um, considering the cost involved. Uh, th th this is this is quite scalable. Um, one of the um, the the frameworks that we're using is uh, Together AI, and they already have the infrastructure that that scales for us in the background. We have other like on-premise types of solutions that we have in our mind for future implementation. So the, 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 there's a couple of different, yeah. So right now we have a scalable solution, yeah. Thanks. All right, I think that's all the time we're gonna give for questions. We're gonna give three minutes for questions. Let's give a round of applause. Otherwise we're gonna be here all night. You want me to write down the order somewhere? <laughs> Uh, hi, we're uh, Oracle Delphi. Uh, we have a, a user-friendly um, image generation AI with a total market addressable market of fifteen billion dollars. It's a B two B and B. Wait a minute, that's not our strategy for a technology startup focused on AI image generation. That's that's iGen. Was I taking really excellent notes just now? No, I was sitting on my hands paying close attention to the people who were presenting. And good job, good job, I did an excellent presentation. I was listening, and so is our app. This is Echo Delphi, which reflects and analyzes the discussion that you're having. Uh, and now my team. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Song Hollyum from the mic. Echo Delphi. Talking to the mic. Hi, my name is Song Hollyum from Echo Delphi. Uh, let me explain how our discussion started. I recently listened to one of the podcasts, and they say that the three primary uh, medical death was caused by first a heart problem, second is a cancer. Third is medical error. So I was a little bit curious about the medical error. And there is many reasons, but one of the reasons is a miscommunication among doctors, nurses, and patients. And if a uh, doctor's order and diagnosis order is uh, carried out correctly or not, that, that kind of idea. So my, my thought was uh, if we can we have uh, some way of capture doctor's order uh, orally and translating to the, the
the electric uh, health record system they currently used in a, a many hospitals and uh, there is an order entry so if we can automate that part we may be uh, solved some of the medical problem so that's how we got started all right so while our presentation is running the demo is going to be sorry while we're doing our presentation the demo is going to be running in the background uh, this is uh yeah okay what is it tinyurl.com yes okay. great hot dog okay oh, works best on chrome whatever who cares Okay, uh, yep, that's what we're doing. Real-time transcription and analysis. The go uh, you wanna do this? No, you don't wanna do this? <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, it is real-time voice to text. It is automated note-taking. It allows you to focus on the meeting. You wanna do the demo? Let's do it, get over it. Uh, whatever you want. Okay. Echo. So let's summarize the presentation. Talking to the microphone. Okay, so let's, I'm going to talk about the text well, project. So we have a website, and two core components for our website is one is the voice to text, and the second is extracting the text and then changing it into our desired form. So for voice to text, we're using DeepGram an external API, and for reformatting the text, we have a live transcript, and we feed that transcript into LLM live. So after LLM has that transcript, it will automatically generate an output, and it will summarize or create a to-do list or whatever we want it to do. So that way, we have a live, live presentation, and also at the same time, a live summarization or to-do list that is based on the transcript. That way, the audience won't lose track of what is happening, and they will be able to follow the summarization and also the to-do list. And it should show up. It's not. Yeah, very question. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Who knows? No the errors. API key. I did change the API key. Oh, I don't know. There's a JSON error. Oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's fine. Yeah. But on this other tab. <laughs> Uh, there you go. Okay, software as a service, automated voice to text, real time transcriptions, no taking. Right? Yeah. And our product is right now it's completely running close free. That means we don't have any backend or database at all. We're running it internal, external API, and we have a static front end side, and we're calling API from the front end. So we, so this website is running completely free. Yeah. Um, yeah. um, 50 seconds. Uh, yep, extract, let's see. We transcribe conversations so you can focus on the meetings. Uh, we organize your thoughts into structured objects. We're actually using a tool that ensures uh, no hallucinations, at, at least not for the categories. Um, this part of the app right here is a, is a hard API, uh, you know, so we can't we don't get to decide the categories. Um, so we're not hallucinating any categories. It's always going to be business model, product market, go to market, like that stuff. Uh, the language model always conforms exactly to spec. Um, and, uh, well, no, we've got 10 seconds. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> come answer some I questions. Just have, uh, point out. In general, what's happening is we have uh, stitched together applications that exist in the marketplace. As those other applications progress, our application progresses, and we leverage and extend the R&D that other much larger companies have done, and they get economies of scales for compute and transmission and various other things. And uh, what you're seeing then is the uh, integration of it uh, on the network side. We're trying right now. We're sending voice over the network. Uh, we can, with the emerging frontier of uh, AI on edge devices, do the voice transcription in an edge device. Okay, which acts a lot of power, and then very little that has to go over the network. All right, time. Let's go to questions for a few minutes. Um, so. 
My question is, how do you plan to monetize it? And um, how much do you plan to charge? Uh, I, I forget this job. Uh, we did not discuss this too much, but mainly it's going to be like a B2B subscription. So it's something like, you know, pie, employee, somebody's going to pay us a $20 subscription. And then that's something that they'll use. And we'll so, so all the meetings, maybe we'll do some analysis for them. So that, that's obviously. office and uh, just have it be a part of their suite of, of tools. So towards the beginning you mentioned that this is, you know, there's medical errors are one of the most common issues that happen. So how do you measure the accuracy of this product and make sure that, you know, especially in terms of medical um, workplaces, these kind of issues? Yeah, I would say in that case, um, we might be looking at using this as a backup or as a, as a check. Uh, of itself so that the professional can look for things that stand out instead of writing the notes from scratch. So if you're talking about treating patients for 20 minutes and then going and writing notes for 20 minutes, maybe we can turn that into treating patients for 30 minutes and checking the notes for five and then, you know, the nurse can take a five minute breather. I can interject also. Another thing you're already familiar with when you go to a fast food drive-in is that you give an order to somebody and they play back what the order was. Mm -hmm. And you confirm, yes, that's what I'm ordering. When you go to Kaiser and, and, and the voice response unit, you say, here's my age, or here's what I'm calling about. They play back, is this what you're calling about? Yes, that's what's happening. In the same way, if you give unstructured voice comments in, it will try to organize it and play it back to, is this what you're saying? And so that's a, that helps the doctor when you get started to say, oh, I think you're talking about these issues. And, but he's already got confirmation. And this might be particularly helpful, for example, if uh, we had different languages supported, as an example. All right. Uh, well, one, one more question. One, one last question. question. So question. I have quick two questions. A. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be short. Uh, A, does it support multiple languages as of now? It supports as many languages as GPT-4 supports. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, have you followed any kind of uh, EHR standards, HIPAA, or any sort of compliance? Because this is medical data we're talking about. No, because that's extremely complicated. We were looking at the open EHR specifications, but it is like a 25,000 line JSON file that we didn't want to go anywhere near this weekend. OK, but you do, is that in pipeline? No, it's not in the pipeline yet. No, we met 24 hours yeah. ago. <laughs> <laughs> the important thing, you bring up an excellent point for both, funding, yeah. for both the health situations where it applies or for secure environments for DOD manuf uh, manufacturers. Yeah. They both have special needs. And <laughs> if we can get the but bike yes. buddies up to stage. Okay. Yes. Okay. yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I use this? <laughs>
Hi, uh, my name is Severe and I'm going to high school. Uh, I'm an eighth grader, but I'm going to ninth, so I just meet the requirements for the hackathon. <laughs> <laughs> so this, uh, we got a group of eight people, but one had to leave because I think he had an appointment. So my name is Sevier, and this is my friend. My name is Abino. Oh, my name is Jimmy. My name is Merson. I am Riley. I'm Frito. My name is Manny. <laughs> Together we all made bite buddies. Have you ever had that feeling whenever you go to a restaurant and you always order the same thing or you don't know what to order and sometimes they you don't like what you get? That's the worst feeling. And we we as a team developed this app so this feeling will never come in your life. All right. So 90% of buyers read online reviews to decide on uh, like what food to purchase or what product to purchase. Um, and two thirds of um, online reviews actually influence purchasing de decisions. Um, so it, it's a, uh, we have a really good market for this as a lot of people would want to read reviews and decide what to get usually. Um, and they usually, tr people usually trust, um, sorry. Okay, yeah. People uh, usually do not trust online reviews that much, as much as they trust like reviews from their friends or like directly, direct contacts. Like for example, sometimes. Closer. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sometimes um, you could have. Uh, I could. I have a friend. I had a friend that um, loves go going out to eat, and he has the best recommendations for me. So whenever I w go to a restaurant. I usually call him up and ask him what I want, but he could record that on his on this app. And whenever um, I open it up or go to the restaurant, I would get a notification, and that notification would give me um, the recommendations that my friends uh, recommended uh, in this restaurant based on the menu uh, of that restaurant. Yeah. So we have a reliable rating system because. Um, all the reviews are directly from our friends. Now we'll proceed to the features of the app. First, this is how our UI looks, created by um, our front end team. And the, basically, whenever you launch onto the app, it gets your latitude and longitude coordinates, and it'll pinpoint what restaurants are next to you with this amazing marker feature. You can click on one of them and it'll show visited by your friends and what your friend's overall rating of that app, that restaurant is. Or you can even search for restaurants around you. Once you click on the restaurant, you'll get a review of all the dishes that your friends have tried from this specific restaurant. As you can see, um, Riley and three others left a review for the Chick-fil-A Nuggets. Now you can see the average rating of each item and you can decide what you'd like to uh, what you'd like to order. If you don't still don't know what to order, I've created this buddy bot recommendation. So what this buddy bot recommendation does is not only does it take dishes that your friends ordered, but it creates a whole friend network of everybody, all the users, and the dishes they chart, and it matches your preference with others with some machine learning. Here's the demo. You should have had a music. <laughs> <laughs> 
So those are the buddy groups. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's the buddy bot recommendations. And you can add your review for whatever dish you tried. So the business model we'll use is basically restaurant advertisements. So uh, restaurants can come up to us and uh, um, they, they can ask for us to advertise their business or promote their business. So in a section on our app, we can have uh, restaurants to try out, restaurant recommendations to try out, or we can uh, recommend a specific dish from their restaurant and uh, something like that in order to uh, raise money. So, uh, yeah, we'll promote local restaurants at low prices, um, which will attract a lot of users uh, to their uh, restaurants, and it will generate a uh, stable income for us and also the restaurants. Okay, um, as you can see, uh, we, can we can also include uh, digital ads, uh, Google ads on the app for another source of revenue. And this, uh, uh, this graph shows um, uh, how... The market. The market <laughs> This works. shows for the market for retail digital ad spending. So now we'll go on to how we develop the app. So for the front end, we use Swift, Swift UI, and Alamo Fire. For the back end, we used Python, Flask, and Mo MongoDB to store our data. This is our database design. Well, All right. Well, that's, that's it. Time. <laughs> Bye, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Stephanie. I like your ideas. Thank you. I would trust my friend with our views. So the question I have is, um, I may have a hundred friends, but there is an eight hundred thousand restaurant in the U.S. So how are you going to get enough traction through your friends to get the stickiness to, to get this stickiness for your user to to stay on the app and have enough reviews from their friends? Because it's a lot of restaurants. There is a lot of restaurants. However, we're looking at more towards our location. We use the Yelp Fusion API to get restaurants within a 20 mile radius around us. So we're not really looking. As you move, like if you go to another country or to another spot in the United States, then the app will change its location. So from that, it'll search if your restaurants have tried anything from a 20 mile radius. Yeah, basically we're not loading in all of the restaurants at the same time. So we, you can search up local restaurants near you. And the main uh, part of this application was that if you visit a restaurant, you will get a pop-up notification. And when you click that notification, you can immediately see your friends' reviews and what to get. Hey there. Um, so let us mention that it is a review system based on friends' connections. Mm -hmm. So let us assume that there are two people with different friend groups. Is it possible that one person can see a review on one restaurant and not the other person because it's not reviewed by their friend? Can you repeat that? Sure. Um, so like, uh, just say that I have two friends and like you have two friends yes. and uh, my friends have reviewed a restaurant. Is it possible for you to see that review as well? Yes, it is possible for us to see that. But our friends are highlighted more. Hmm. Uh, and then comes secondary reviews from more farther down the network. Makes sense. So then it isn't restricted to your friend group then. Yes. So your friend group will be boosted higher. Yeah. Yeah, your friend group is actually shown, but uh, the body bot recommendation will also include the network and then I will recommend using that. Hello. Uh, so you mentioned gamification. Um, what games are you guys introducing as part of the offering? I don't think we mentioned that. Well, how do you create a stickiness to encourage oh. people to keep using them, right? Oh. You like to answer that? Wait, could you repeat that question? So I'm, uh, maybe I'm hallucinating, right? <laughs> um, I remember seeing there was a phrase that says gamification and some of the things that you I don't think that was on ours. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 
Our app's purpose is just to reduce the feeling of not knowing what to order or getting the wrong dish. And, and it's also a conversation starter if you ever talk to your friends. Well, I know you guys do talk to your friends. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think that's all that time we have for questions. Let's give a round of applause. And just to remember, AI drone. AI drone, let's get on up here. Uh, we've got to hurry, 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 because we're running out of time. Uh, just remember that that microphone, you need to talk really close to it. It doesn't pick up sound otherwise. Okay. We, we need to call the next team during questions so that the next team is ready to go. So let me uh This is it. Uh, Hi. You can take it out of the mic uh, stand. Uh, hello. Uh, we are a heroes team of six people. Harrison, uh, do lines. Uh, Natish, Devin, Jim, and Anna. Um, and today at this hackathon, we are presenting an AI 3D drone simulator um, you, uh, in virtual reality using 3JS and TensorFlow. The main goal uh, is to prevent drone damages uh, when testing new functions and to simulate behavior uh, with AI in a 3D simulation. Um, so here's an example video of how we created the 3D environment and uh, the drone simulation in the 3D environment. In this case, uh, we pre-trained one model to simulate drone behavior and uh, we also created a particle generation with TensorFlow to uh, simulate um, object around. And uh, yeah, this is a small demo video. This is drone controlled by AI. Uh, rotation, acceleration, uh, movement. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think uh, this is a small demo. Well, you might be wondering, how do you monetize something like this? Well, how many companies do you guys know that use drones? Of course, one of our sponsors, Red Bull, uses them absolutely every single day for most of their projects. So do many other companies like Amazon considering to get their drones into deployment? So are companies such as actually any governmental agency, especially military purposes. So. How exactly do you monetize this? Well, what simulation offers is that you're able to go ahead and understand how you're able to use your drones, especially in different environments with the use of our sensors, without having to actually deploy them. This frees you to use your resources where they're actually needed, instead of having to test whether or not you can actively use them in the environment itself and then have to deal with the inconsistencies. Instead, you can go ahead, simulate it using our software, and then you have a little bit more proof of what exactly is going on. So this is the sensor. This sensor has many different <coughs> capabilities. In particular, it allows us to see um, natural matter in use cases such as fire detection and many other use cases. This would allow you to not just understand the environment, but also the changes that are actively happening in cases like wildfires and other applications where drones and helicopters are already used. Thank you. All right, let's give them a round of applause. Uh, any any questions? Yeah. Do you? Um, I'm kind of curious. What did you? 
build this weekend and how, how much of this was built this weekend and how much of this was stuff that you had before this weekend? Uh, yeah, um, this weekend we, um, So I had just before idea, but uh, so I was able to implement this um, idea like an 3D simulation during uh, today. Yeah, yeah and, and, and most of the, the 3JS framework that this is yeah. built off of was done in the last two days. Yeah, we, we work on the, so we thought about this team how to uh, correctly retrain this model and so we came up with uh, drone generation table. Uh, yeah and, and also is that uh, the, the fact that it was such a short notice uh, there wasn't you know it's it was a very short uh, duration and so uh, we don't have uh, a larger uh, data set to really do more with, uh, but we will. And so that's kind of the idea behind this is that this is just the initial pitch um, and really just coded enough to be able to make it render uh, space and do a little submission. Do you have any, any other questions? Uh, no other questions. Oh, any other questions? Yes. One more question. Uh, can you help me understand how that we make the world better things? Um, well, the general idea of it is that there are so many companies, especially like wildfire situation in particular is one that we can look at. We can actively, in many other countries, they use drones to actually drop layers and layers of um, any tech chemical name, but it stops the spread of wildfire so further than a certain point. If you're able to get an actual representation of the environments where you expect wildfires to happen, you can pre-train your drone deployment and how you're expecting that environment to be. Instead of having to do that exactly in the moment and expect that everything goes right, you have a little bit more of an agreement beforehand that it will work out. So that would be one case where it could be used in a positive manner. There are many other cases for it, but because it's drones, so there's military application and non-military application, and they would affect the world in many different ways. All right, round of applause. <laughs> Next, we have Why Not Energy. Uh, hello everybody, uh, we are uh, why not energy? I can't click on anything. This is weird. Uh, it's it's probably a second screen off to one side, maybe. Oh, it's extended. Maybe. So. This, okay, on my screen, it's frozen. I don't know what you guys have seen. <laughs> That's so weird. Mm -hmm. my, my cursor is a really easy though. Um, should we try the other adapter? Yeah, I'll pass it back to this. Just this one. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Um, first up, we're going to have Sonia do the presentation. Sonia, you ready to go? Uh, go ahead. At the, at the bottom there, you have to click uh, output HD 60. Okay. Hi 
We are introducing Why Not, the revolutionary energy tracker that puts us in control of your well-being. By monitoring your energy levels and providing personalized insights, we empower you to make informed decisions and make the best out of this app. So, many people want to go outside and meet new people. This requires high energy to engage in fulfilling activities. People desire to meet energetic individuals and participate in various experiences. So the solution is the tracker. Tracks your energy. Why not seamlessly integrates with your daily routine, allowing you to monitor your energy levels throughout the day. It gives you personalized insights through our advanced algorithms, which analyze your data to provide tailored recommendations for optimizing your productivity. It also provides engagement and support with personalized encouragement, helping you stay on track and achieve your energy goals. What are the key features? Energy tracking seamlessly monitors your energy levels throughout the day, gaining invaluable insights into your body's rhythm. It also helps you comment and reflect to your energy logs easily, allowing you to reflect on your experiences and track patterns. It provides encouragement and motivation and gives tips to help you maintain your energy levels and reach your goals. What are the future enhancements to expand our horizon? So it provides us with badges and rewards. So as you complete activities, you earn a badge. It also has social media features for you to comment and comment on posts and like. It does energy mapping visualizes your energy patterns on a heat map, like a, a scatter plot, and empowers you to identify and address the areas that are concerning to you. So, what is the tech market for wearables? So, it's experiencing a remarkable growth, and it's projected to reach a value of 150 billion by 2023, which is 20% of the CAGR from 2024 to 2030. So this industry is poised for continuous uh, expansion. The revenue breakdown is as follows. Uh, the target age group is 18 to 15 years old and the key players are Fitbit, Apple, Grameen and Food. And the following are the market expansion opportunities. This is our team. And Now I'll go over to I'll bring right back here. <laughs> where, where are all my screens? <laughs> okay, so <sorry. laughs> Did that page close? We can get right Brent over to get prepared. Yep, All right, so here's the QR code if you want to. Sorry, here's the QR code if you want to grab that on your own phone. The link is also in the dev post submission, um, if that's more convenient for you. Um, but maybe I'll leave this over here for people as I jump into the demo. So. Sure. So we want to show today that it's, it's a web app, but for long-term growth, we would want to have a native app for this. Um, on the home page, each day when I log in, I have the option to put in my energy level. So if I'm not feeling great, I see, hey, the assistant is ready to help. So I can actually just say, why not? Give me some tips and let's see what it comes up with. So it's recommending I can get moving, take a cold shower, get some fresh air, eat a snack, or take a power nap. Uh, Whatever is interesting to me, maybe I can ask some more information about Power Nap, and let's see what it comes up with. Uh, okay, this is not exactly related, but that's great. And uh, then the other thing I can do is I can show events, and that's going to give me a list of meetup events that I can take part in to raise my energy levels, meet friends, and deepen my hobbies and habits. Uh, from there, I can also uh, check out the feed and the community so I can post my own events and posts to meet with others too. 
Thank you. So this is something that users have to continuously input uh, in the web app throughout the day? Um, at least once per day would be recommended so that we get a good idea of your uh, energy over time. Also, it will be integration with your health, uh, Apple Health and uh, all that stuff. So we will uh, accept that data as well. What kind of data would it accept from, say, Apple Health in terms of like energy levels, right? Like, that's not very clear to me. Uh, quantity of hours, uh, like how much uh, do you sleep tonight and uh, your activity in general and your, you know, like waves of energy as well. So we have, and maybe some fitness devices they can provide like access to good rotation or something like that. So, so what's the business model? Uh, we will be sponsored by Red Bull because <laughs> why not energy means uh, Red Bull energy. So we will create community of people who are ready to go like that. Very easy. So why not to go hiking? Or why not to jump from plane today? Hey there. Um, have you considered any partnerships with uh, mental health professionals or experts in the field to add any credibility or value to the platform? Yeah, exactly. It uh, depends on your level of energy. Yeah, it, it will be different suggestions and different offers. Depends on the uh, level of your energy. If you continuously on that level, like it will be triggered our uh, patterns. What we can suggest, we can provide you personal, like uh, personal help or like group meditations or whatever. So like. Yeah, we have a lot of different like hypotheses about that. But uh, depending on your level of energy, we can offer and suggest you different activities, different services, different everything. If you're always like full of energy, we can provide you extra activity like going somewhere, some ticket system, wherever. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Let's give them a round of applause. Okay. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, we are Team Recrent, and uh, we are going to show you what we built over this weekend. Uh, first, with introductions, my name is Max Soren. Um, I'm a embedded software engineer. I work just down the street. Uh, we have Joseph here. He was our pretty much our lead front end designer. Beautiful work. Uh, came on here. He did a lot of our business plan. And uh, Remy here, he did, he did a, uh, a lot of our authentication and back end things. We have two more teammates. Unfortunately, they couldn't make it. Make it. Um, Ira, she has to work. She also helped with the business plan. And Frank was very experienced with our back end design, which we will go through in, a se in one second here. So our mission statement, um, we, want, we want you to be able to discover your next passion through our adventures made accessible by each other. And throughout this presentation, we'll take you through um, our business overview, our market analysis, our tech stack, uh, the financial plan, and uh, any future uh, ideas that we have that we would like to incorporate into our, into our business. 
So at RecRent, we want to aim to give our audience the opportunity to make their recreational equipment work for them. So imagine this, you go to Tahoe or you go to any uh, marina and all you see is boats sitting there not doing anything. One of our strongest sales pitches is these people who have boats sitting, they should be able to rent these boats out to people who want to use either boats, jet skis. Think about Tahoe. You go to Tahoe, you want to use a jet ski or a boat or a kayak, but you either don't have the means to afford or you can't transport, but it's already there for people to simply rent out and make money off of. Not only does the lender make money, the person renting gets to rent for cheaper than market price and they get to have a good time doing it. So there was a uh, there's this quote here from uh, I believe an old Italian philosopher. There's no joy in possession without sharing. Um, I kind of just described the problem to you guys. We want people want to be able to try recreational equipment, but they have no there's no platform to do so right now from at least from a peer to peer perspective. Um, how it goes down. Uh, I mean, simplest explanation is Airbnb for recreational equipment. So you want to, uh, you find, you you plan where you're going, you want to find something to do, um, you look up a, uh, you, you search in one of our categories, and if it's there and available during those dates, you're able to rent it out. Um, so the owner will post their, their product on the platform, the customer finds the product, the contact begins, the owner can uh, deny them if they either don't have the credibility or they, they, they just want to get denied, I mean, that's how it works. Um, and then uh, if the customer chooses an insurance plan, if necessary, so if you've ever used Turo, you need to choose an insurance plan uh, when you rent out a car from them. Uh, and then from there, it's pretty standard. There's delivery, product rental, pick up, pick up and return, and payment. So our, our market analysis, there's a few competitors. Um, we're out of time here, so we'll go quick. Gear Garage takes like a ton of profit. They take like, they upcharge by 20% and they take 40% profit, it's crazy. Uh, Friendwitha and Ransack, actually pretty dang decent products, uh, but their front end is kind of iffy and at the same time, they're not very big, um, which is actually why it's such a great idea to get into this now because no one has taken over yet. So how we compete, we want uh, ease of access and a simple yet quality experience. Um, and th that's like the biggest thing, you want simplicity and quality. Uh, and then through AI, we want to be able to track popularity and availability and be able to suggest a best price, whether that's surge pricing or making prices cheaper. Um, target audience, younger people between you know 21 to about 40 years old who still have that oomph. Sorry about you guys, if you're a little older, you probably don't want to be you know, going down huge ski hills or whatnot, but our tech stack. So we'll go through our tech stack. The front end and it was all done in Next.js and React. It's modern, it's fast, it's, uh, it, it adjusts to different sizes. It, we haven't tested it on a mobile, but you stretch it around the screen, it looks beautiful, it works. Authentication is all done through Next Auth, modern, fast, secure, and our database, which we do have set up and working, uh, is MongoDB and Prisma. Prisma's our ORM, and then Mongo scales horizontally because we don't have a lot of relationships, we don't need a SQL database. Uh, moving forward to our services, so it's a it's a platform as a service essentially. People come, they post their stuff, and people are able to rent, and everyone makes money, or or you have a good time if you're the renter. Um, we want to be able to provide live updates. So if you know if someone's using your boat, if the owner wants to check up on it, same thing as Turo. You're able to message the person who's renting your boat and say how's it going, things like that. Uh, everything is planned, everything is scheduled, uh, and we, we can demo that in just a minute here. Our financial plan. So the biggest issue or the biggest risk here is uh, if we provide insurance and something gets damaged, we have to pay out. Obviously, that's a loss. Uh, also, operating costs, you know, running a server, paying for Mongo, things like that. Profit. We have this idea for uh, to make sponsored posts. Essentially, what happens is if you want your post to be displayed on the front, pay some extra money, it goes to the front. Very common to, uh very common in, in, in modern software. And then a high profit scenario is someone buys the insurance, they have a successful rent, rental, we get our 20% or so cut, and we get the, the rental money from that. Um, for the future, we want to be able to launch on mobile since I mentioned that we, re we launched on React. I mean, it's the website is very, very, uh, I mean, here's a demo of the website. Almost, it, it looks like Airbnb or like Turo. Come here, where are we adventuring? We're going to, we're going to Tahoe, okay? How many of us are there? Or for how long are we going? We're going for a few weeks. How many guests? Seven of us are going. We can rent this massive yacht, okay? <laughs> Look at this yacht. 5,600 bucks a day. Um, we have a nice loading screen. Seven guests, it's all dynamic. Um, and we actually have a backend working for this. So we have, uh, I was able to upload a few pictures. Uh, well, here, I'll show you the, I have six seconds. So 
We have user authentication. We have listings here, and we're open for questions. There you go. Hi, beautiful presentation. Uh, can you tell us more about your uh, go-to-market strategy? Um, could you elaborate on what go-to-market strategy? So how do you plan to get tractions? Where are you going to uh, advertise or what social media platforms or yeah, so collaboration with enterprises? Yeah. Interestingly enough, um, the best ideas don't really require a lot of advertising. Things like Airbnb, Facebook, all of the, even watching any uh, Y Combinator videos, the best advertising is just through word of mouth because your product is so incredibly good. If it's as easy as going on, you know, launching, listing something and someone using it, they have a great experience, they're going to tell their friend, we go to Tahoe, let's rent this boat, let's do this. Word of mouth with a quality product is, I mean, that's how the best companies in the world do it. So, but, but where, where are you going to get started? Like, if you want to do it organically? Completely? Uh, like, yes. no influencer, no, no press, nothing? Um, I mean, I would love to have, uh, you know, an influencer say, this is the way to do it. You know, like, let's you rent my boat, you know, some influencer with a yacht, rent my boat. If we had some sort of budget, we could look at like online advertising on Instagram and things like that, especially if people are on trips already, they'll be able to see those types of advertisements catered to them. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Say if I use a tarot, I wouldn't use a tarot to rent a Toyota because I, if I want to use a tarot, if I use Zipcar and uh, Enterprise, if you rent a tarot or a Toyota, that, that is the cheapest one. If I use a tarot, I only want to rent a special customized car like Ferrari. Other platforms don't provide. So let's say I go to Tahoe, I rent a more, uh, bicycle from a merchandise store. That definitely is cheaper than you because we already streamlined the whole cost of the bicycles. I'm sorry, I missed the part. You said you've already rented what? Like if I want to rent a bicycle in Tahoe, uh, the, the stores were definitely cheaper than you because we already streamlined the cost. So I... Um, so what target do you target? Do you target to the high end? So what we're targeting, it's the idea is peer-to-peer -peer rentals. And I'm not sure... When we did our market research on renting anything in Tahoe, whether it be bikes or boats or jet skis, the prices were quite astronomical. Uh, a boat per hour is $200 per hour. I think a bike per day is probably upwards of like $70 to $80 per day. And those are going through businesses. Going through peer-to-peer, -peer, we flood the market with, uh, with supply, which forces the prices to come down for people who don't actually own these things to be able to use them. Um, how do you solve the chicken and egg problem? Like, because if I want to rent something, right? Like, I would need people who have things to rent, and then if people want to rent something, they would need people who need things that they want rented. So, like, how do you solve that problem? Yeah, I think that's a, that's an excellent question, and I think the um, even like the go to market question might be like the best way to. to, to answer something like that. If we can get people to start listing their things, specifically in high traffic areas, like I think of Denver, Hawaii, Tahoe, places where people have stuff just kind of sitting and they could make money off of it because there's high tourist traffic, that would be the way to do it. And once again, if, it, if we gain traction, people start posting, people are gonna start sharing, recommending, and that's how, that's how traction gets built. Can I? So back to like the word of mouth said, uh, uh, thing you said. Also, we could uh, advertise on social media, considering that's like kind of the move for companies nowadays to advertise their product. And uh, I think that's a yeah. I think that's a, I think that's a way to. I think that's the one of our ways of getting our product out here. All right. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Thank you. Next up is Buddy. He's transcribing. All right. Uh, how's everyone doing? Thank you for coming out. Uh, so we're Buddy, uh, our software app. Here's uh, our team of rock stars. Okay. 
All right, so what's the problem? This has happened to everyone here. All right, uh, we want to go home. We have a busy day. We value our time, but then someone stops us, either a loved one or a stranger, and they uh, drag us into a conversation we don't want to have, and we just want to get out of it. But I can see everyone here. You guys are kind folk. You're, you're all nice people. You don't want to hurt the other person's feeling. How do you get out of this conversation? All right? Here's a solution. Uh, buddy, we need a buddy to save us from being held as a conversation hostage. So either a angry wife or that um, Secret Service member who uh, <laughs> who saved uh, George Bush on uh, yeah that infamous uh, picture everyone knows about. Um, market opportunity. All right, so uh, this uh, strong statistic uh, from Harvard, only about 2% of conversations ended when both parties wanted them to. So how many conversations are we having where uh, either one person just wants to leave? Um, 4.8 billion people in the world have a smartphone and that's only projected to go up. So um, that's our, our market. Our business model is quite simple. Subscription plans, $5 a month or $50 a year or pay per use, uh, $1 per call, pretty simple. Unlock advanced features. Um, we have uh, ten dollars per celebrity voice. That's always fun. <laughs> Competitive analysis. So this picture, uh, this chair is empty. No one's doing this, right? This is our time. Be first to market. That's our strategy here. Uh, so again, our, our strategy, uh, October 1st is coming up, Olympics, uh, go to farmers markets, uh, social media, pretty standard for everyone. Uh, partnerships. Uh, we, oh, this is serious, we want celebrities. We want Beyonce, Larry David, and uh, the legendary Eugenio Derbez. Uh, financial projections. So we want $3 million for 8% equity. Uh, we project about 20% uh, daily signups uh, from here on out. <laughs> We're looking forward to making you money. <laughs> All right, and uh, here to actually show you how it works. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, while we're setting up the demo, just like a quick word about the tech stack for this thing. Uh, pretty simple, pretty minimal, uh, pretty modern, lightweight. Uh, front end, uh, React, uh, ordinary stuff. Uh, Shad CF for deployment systems. Uh, database, uh, Drizzle JS with uh, SQLite. So lightweight, again, minimal, simple. Uh, build system with bun screen. Uh, is the screen coming up? Drag it. Got to drag it over, maybe. Anyway, build system with bun. Again, lightweight, modern, uh, written in Zig, world's coolest, exciting, newest programming language. Um, server side frameworks, uh, Next.js and Alicia. And authentication with Lucia GS. Uh, again, simple, modular, reliable, time tested, uh, swappable, uh, modern, easy to hire for, I suppose. And then any second now, this demo will come up and will wow you with what this looks like. It's going to be amazing. Right. Maybe. <laughs> Possibly. It's coming. I mean, we're still on the clock, so you know, three minutes to, uh, to wow you. Uh, so how about... Um, Tell us more about it. How about them giants? <laughs> Tell us more about some of the features you built. Oh, some very exciting features. Um, well, I mean, this really only has one feature, which is saving you time and saving your life from conversations you don't want to have. Uh, like, we spent all weekend, uh, you know, let's put in tears, building this. Fantastic. Well, here's a way to actually demo the thing to you. Okay. So um, let me just log into my app real fast. And um, so th this is the dashboard of our app. Um, of course, everyone's gamifying things nowadays. So now we're going to show you, for example, uh, we're going to plug into your uh, Apple Watch statistics to show you just how stressed you are when you're trapped <laughs> in the conversation. We're also going to show you just how many conversation minutes you've evaded. And of course, how many conversations, uh, how many conversation minutes you saved over the course of the week? And of course, every single app in the world should come with command menus. Wow. <laughs> um, uh, let's go over to personality real fast. So uh, these are different personalities that we've generated ahead of time. Um, we're going to have more. For example, 
You know what? I've been here for 47 minutes. Like, what are you even doing? Why did you message? I've been here for 47 minutes. <laughs> like, what are you even doing? Why didn't you message? I've been here for 47 minutes. Like, what are you even doing? Why did you message? So the idea is um, you can um, create different action plans ahead of time so that uh, different people will call and message you at different times um, to interrupt you. And these are different themes that we might suggest ahead of time. Um, there's also uh, other stuff like uh, to, to show uh, the plans you've run in the past. And uh, we're just about out of time, and that's about it. How do you trigger it? In real use, I'm talking to somebody. How do you, what, what happens? Well, the new iPhone comes with a customized button, so you reach into your pocket and you press a button. You should have told us this in the first moment. Okay. Okay. So I push the button, and then I hear my, my wife say, where are you, dude? As well as a stream of messages. You can customize the action plan. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's a great presentation. So my question is that, so how do you define your target? So I mean, if I drive to the company, so I probably won't have this kind of conversation with some strangers. Sorry, if you drive to a company, uh, I probably won't have any conversations with any strangers. So for me, probably I'm not the target user. So I want to understand how do you define the target user. So to me, the target user is anyone who feels that they're trapped in a conversation and they want a way to get out. I will personally talk to you and make you uncomfortable, and then you'll be our user. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, any other? We've got more questions. Would you be able to um, implement additional triggers? Say my heart rate goes up by thirty points per minute, and then something automatically triggers the call to come in, so I don't have to reach into my pocket and press a button. Absolutely, but that might trigger it during romantic moments. <laughs> <laughs> Something to work on, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Thank you. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Next up, we have Founder. <laughs> It's great. <laughs> All right, hey, what's up, guys? Wait, what are you doing right now? I said, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just trying to get a co founder so I can start a business. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's a lot easier to have one person than just like me handle the whole work. Yeah, I know what you're saying. <laughs> What's wrong? I just, feel, I just feel like he disagrees with almost everything I said. I just wish I could find someone that's more like compatible with me, but it's way too hard to find. <laughs> All right, that's why we created Founder. <laughs> All right, did you know that businesses with uh, single founders are 30% more likely to fail than businesses with uh, more than one founder? Uh, this is all sourced by an MIT study and is shown by this graph. 
Okay, so what is Founder in the first place? So our company is pretty much trying to revolutionize the uh, entre entrepreneurship area by creating an app that uh, allows you to find co-founders very easily. And pretty much how we do that is kind of like a Tinder-like system where you put in your own personality traits, you have like a, what your preferred personality trait, like what you want out of a co-founder, what field, like how they should be like personality-wise, and you know where they should live, like how old they are. And from there, you get a bunch of matches. You can swipe right or left. If you both swipe right, you match. You guys can start chatting. If you both swipe left, that uh, changes the recommendations so that um, you're more likely to find people that you want to match with. So why should you use it? Okay, so why you should use Founder is because it's very accessible, really easy to use. It's extremely basic. Like our website is very, very basic. It's like better to share the workload with another person and it's also very cheap. We have a premium subscription, which gives you unlimited swipes a day, but the free, like the free subscription gives only 10, and it's only 10.99 a month or 89.99 a year. And it's also good to like, I guess, branch out like your social network to find like-minded people. So let's take a look. Let's see what we're working with. So you're greeted with the sign-in page. Um, you can put your username or whatever, we can register. Uh, say your username is like, or, so say my username is like cool dude one, right? Email will say cool at gmail.com. Password will say one, two, three, one, two, three, confirm. Sign up. So first you're gonna put your name. So I'll say Joseph, age 22. Field, we're gonna do like software development uh, or something, software dev. Location, we'll say Stanford because we're from Stanford, I'm not gonna lie. Um, our self description will say we're really cool, really cool. And then experience will say 20 years. Strengths, uh, cool. <laughs> Aspirations, also cool. Um, a profile photo, let's just say, like, I don't know, something random. This is old, old photo, yo. <laughs> okay, create account. Oh, so, so these are the preferences. This is what you're going to get match off of. So we're going to say preferred age 22, preferred field, software engineering, preferred location, Stanford. Uh, preferred goals will be the, the millionaire. Uh, preferred qualities, young. Update preferences, you'll go back to sign in. I'll say, oh wait, what was my, oh yeah, cool, cool dude, one. Password, one, two, three, one, two, three. Sign in, oh, oh, cool dude. Cool dude, one. One, two, three, one, two, three, sign in. So then we'll see like these people, right? In data science age 21, Stanford, he likes to eat data. 30 years of everything, cool kid in every situation, you can like or dislike. And if you like or dislike, it'll like change whatever, um, like it'll change to a new person, right? So we'll like, and then it'll be another person, Arian, 16, he likes art from Houston, loves being artist, 100 years of being cool. And he wants to be a millionaire as we want our like goals to be, like that's one of our preferences. And let's go back. Let's see our business model. All right, so for uh, monetization, as mentioned before, we had um, a subscription. And also, if you have the free um, version, there will be advertisements. And for outreach, we can use more organic content like shown before. And also just advertisements on like other sites. So we didn't have too much time this weekend, but if we did have more time, um, I'd like to start talking about collaboration so we could partner with specifically LinkedIn because that's a fantastic website to find jobs and I think they're like missing this field so that's where we come in and also um, we can have successful companies like verify us as like um, a trustworthy like app and also um, more specifics to team we can increase better servers um, we can also have a larger team and um, a more digestible interface um, and also any other ideas and as of now, we can only have one other uh, co-founder. So in the future, we plan to make more co-founders. Like, I mean, you can have more, more than one co-founder. And also, we would like to expand the preference page and also implement a better algorithm. And if you've ever used Tinder before, you would know if you liked with someone and you both like liked each other, there'd be a chat. So we'd like to implement that one day. All right, we can't guarantee you to come up with your own billionaire idea, but we can guarantee someone else will. So swipe light and build your dream team. Thank you. Uh, do you want to talk really quick about what you built over the weekend? Like, which, what was the hardest part? 
Uh, that was probably. Oh yeah. So pretty much we had two major, like big parts, which was the database, which is our kind of like our back end where we're holding all the user info and what the preferred um, qualities are. But also at the same time was the algorithm. Pretty much, uh, we were initially going to go with like a machine learning algorithm that was really slow. So then we went with like a scoring algorithm, which Tinder used to use. And uh, from there, we would give age, qualities, uh, description, all that in different weighting, and then create like a total score. And then if they, if you like the person, that would increase their score by a certain amount. If you dislike them, decrease that score. And then that similarity is kind of how we're ranking the um, users. Um, how do you make users stick to the platform? So like if I found a co-founder, I'm probably not going to use you again, right? So I guess there's not really a way we can like force you to like come back, but we do, I guess, uh, in a little, like in a way, we like bank on the fact that you'll, like, I guess if you're actually successful, you'll like see this and say like, oh, you know, founder actually helped us like build this and maybe they'll, you know, sponsor us or do something like that. Um, could you speak to more about the matching algorithm? So from what I've heard, it's like based on the references which you set, and like if you like or dislike a person, the score goes up and down. Yeah. Could it also involve like you know the user activity? For example, if I like to search for more data centric co-founders, then like will I be shown more data centric co-founders? So if uh, well, kind of yeah, that's how the liking system works. So if you're if you have more likes on a certain like type of person, that increases the overall like score of those type of people to show you more of that when we rank the users. All right, let's give them a round of applause. All the scores and come back to you in a little bit with the results.